Hey guys, Krista here from Davy and Krista. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I size images for both websites and blogs. So whether you are blogging these images or you're just putting them on your website, I do the same process for each. Um, so to start, I'm going to show you how I would size an image in Photoshop, which I will warn you is not my preferred way to size an image. Um, I think there are other faster ways to batch images, but in case you don't have access to the other software I'll show you, I will show you how to size just one image in Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to open up my image in Photoshop. And from here, if you have your pixels on, on your rulers. And so if you hit command R that will toggle these rulers on and off, I can see that this image is 2,600 pixels wide and about 2000 pixels tall, which is too large to load on a website. Ideally, we don't want to have an image more than 1400 pixels wide. I would say if it's going to be an image that spans the entire background of the site, you can get away with making something up to 2000 pixels wide, but I would really only do that with a few select images because 2000 pixels wide is really large. And if you have too many of those images on your site, it could slow your site down to save this image for the web. I'm going to go up to file and then down to export and I'm going to click save for web. And in here you can control the sizes. So I'm going to make this 1400 pixels wide and the height will just adjust automatically. And then we probably don't need the quality to be so high. You can kind of play with it a little and you can zoom in if you want to focus on some of the details in it. Um, but you can see that there's not a huge difference between a quality of 100 and maybe a quality of 87. But if you look down here, this is going to be our size. And so we go from 747, probably up to over one. So yeah, 1.23. I would probably aim for a quality of around 72%, um, but you can kind of experiment with this too. Even this is a pretty large size for an image. And the way I'm going to show you in a minute, I think optimizes images just as well, probably better, faster. And I think it gets them smaller. Um, but if you want to use Photoshop, this is how I do it. So once you have your image set, you would just hit save and then give it its name and then click save. My personal favorite way to size images for the web is to use Blogstomp. So Blogstomp is a software that you can download and add to both PCs and Macs. And I think it's like $100 just once. So it's more affordable than the Creative Suite. And we literally use it for every single blog post and image that we size. So the way that it works is that you would select some of your images. So I am just going to select a handful of images um, just to show you. So let's say I wanted to blog these images. I would drag them into blog stomp and then I'm just going to click on one. And then the first time you use it, you're going to need to set a style. So I'm going to come down here to styles. I'm going to click edit or create your styles and you can play with things in here. So I'm going to give this a name. So Krista test 1400. I am going to make the image 1400 pixels wide. I don't want images to have borders. I don't want them to have strokes or tabs, but if you did want watermarks or something, you could add those there. I just personally, I'm not a fan of them. And then you can kind of play with the image quality in here. I normally have mine set to be around 95. Um, if you wanted to upload your logo, you could again, though, I think it's cleaner not to use that logo on your images. And then you can also set select output. So once you're done setting up all of your settings in here, I would hit okay, because that's going to save your setting. And then from here, we're going to go back in and edit that style one more time. And we're going to go to output. So I like to leave images with their original file name. And then I like to sharpen for the web. So I'll come down here to configure sharpening. And I normally just select expert sharpening and let it use all of its default settings and then hit save. Once this is done, you can select your new style in here and then you can click on batch 
And then if you click on batch, it's just going to automatically run through all of your images. So I'll click on stomp it and you'll see it'll go through all of my images. And then on my desktop, there's going to be a folder called stomped and all of my images will be in here. So if you haven't exported your images from Lightroom, for example, with keywords in them, now is before you upload is a good time to change your images. So I can just select all of my images at once and click on and right click and then click rename 10 items. Um, and so you can see here that it's going to add text before the name. I generally think it's a good idea to select this format option. And so from here, instead of saying like file or a couple's names, we can say their wedding location, their venue, um, or if you're exporting images that are not a wedding, just keywords that you want to come up in a search for. So um, if I was actually optimizing these images for a wedding photographer, I would name them Washington DC wedding. And then I probably put the venue name in here, which I can't remember right now, but um, we'll just pretend it was Chapel Hill winery. And you want to make sure that these don't get too long. 60 to 70 characters is probably the cutoff. Um, and you can see the example, what it's going to look like here. I'm actually going to take out a word just so that you can see how it adds the number because I think it's important to add a hyphen at the end of this text so that the one doesn't get connected with the number. You want to have hyphens in between all of the words so that Google can read those individual order words. Um, so if I just hit rename, it's going to rename them all with my keywords, add the one to make sure that they're all different and it'll keep them as JPEGs. From here, if you want to go the extra mile when it comes to optimizing your images, I've had a lot of luck using this website, Tiny JPEG, to compress images even more, and I've noticed that they're not losing their quality at all. So I will just take my batch of stomped images, and you can upload up to 20 images per batch free. Um, so I'll just upload my 10 here, and you can see that these files are still fairly large. And so we're going to run this compressor, and it's going to take this individual file from 1.2 megabytes down to down to 336 kilobytes which is a really big reduction um and so it's going to do that with all of these images and then i just download them all so if i download them and then i open them up again i can open up these files and to me they the quality is still really good but the images are significantly smaller than they were so this can help keep your site from becoming too large because of images.